Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're going to talk about how to set up your POP3 email account in Gmail. When you're setting up an email account, a POP3 email is what most of us have when we have our own email account. As long as if you don't have an exchange server or you don't have some special setup that you would know about if you did because you would have a whole IT department who would have set something up differently for you then likely what you have is a POP3 email account and you can set that POP3 email account to actually come into your Gmail account that way you can manage all of your email using Gmail which if you're already using Gmail then you know it has some great features in terms of spam filters and in terms of just organizing your emails the only thing that takes a little getting used to is that everything has to get organized by the subject of the email. I'll be honest, it took me a little while to get used to that. I didn't like the idea at first that I couldn't choose to sort things by who it came from or which subject, but I've got, gotten used to the idea that I simply use the search feature to find uh, who, you know, emails based on who sent them to me. And I use this subject really to group things. And what I've done as a result is I've actually put more thinking into the subject line that I write when I initiate an email to someone because I know that later on that's what I'm going to be searching for it by. And I found in business in general that it's actually very helpful to do that. That I always put the, if I'm emailing somebody who's a customer or if I'm emailing somebody else about a customer, I always put that customer name in the subject line. It makes it easy to keep things organized and most importantly it makes them quick and easy to find. And as you may have heard me say many times, for me at the end of the day being organized is all about making sure I can find something in 30 seconds or less when I'm looking for it. So let's look at how to set up your POP3 email account in Gmail. I'm looking at a, a brand new Gmail account that I created really just for this purpose. I might use it. And what we want to do is we want to go into our settings. So we come over here to this little flywheel and we go into mail settings. And then we're going to come right over here to accounts and import. Then over here, if you scroll down, you may not even have to scroll down. It says right here, add POP3 email account. Click on that. And the first thing it's going to ask you to do is enter the email address. Now what I've done is I've set up a temporary email account at Nerd Enterprises. It's just called bookkeeper at nerdenterprises.com. So using Evernote, as you can see here, to uh, keep track of the information. And this is what I do so that later on, if I have to look up the password or any other information surrounding that email, I have it in an Evernote note. And I'm going to paste the email address right in here and click Next Step. Now, the username is going to vary depending on your hosting company, whoever hosts your email. I use GoDaddy. So with GoDaddy, the username is the entire email address. With many companies, it might just be the part that precedes the at sign. I'm going to put in my password here, bookkeeper for you. And then it wants the pop server. Now, this is going to be the incoming mail server. And you have to make sure that you get that information from your email host before you go to set this up. You need the incoming mail server and the outgoing mail server. Oftentimes, they're one and the same. As you can see with GoDaddy, they are, in fact, different. But when we're initially setting this up, we're setting it up just to receive email. So it's the incoming mail server, which in GoDaddy's case is pop.secureserver.net. Now this next option, leave a copy of retrieved message on server, is important if you intend to capture this email somewhere else, like in your Outlook profile, if you want to use both. I did them both simultaneously until I got used to Gmail. Then you check this option off and it will leave it on the server. It won't, it won't pull it off the server. If you leave it unchecked, then what it'll do is it'll grab it off the server. If you're using GoDaddy like I am, then it'll grab the email off the GoDaddy mail server and it's off there permanently and then it's permanently over in Gmail, which is fine for my purposes because Gmail is web-based, so it doesn't matter. I don't need to leave it. I don't use Outlook at all anymore. So I can access this email anytime from anywhere. And the great thing about it, doing it this way, is if I filed it in a label, then when I go to another computer and I access my email account online, it's already filed. It's not like having two separate Outlook profiles, which I used to do for two separate computers where I file them on one, they're still not filed on the other one. So I have to do the work twice. This saves a ton of time when you do it this way. Everything else you can pretty much uh, leave blank. You can label the incoming messages uh, or create a new label. So you might want to label the incoming messages, especially if you have other email accounts, to, to distinguish very clearly that this is an email that was sent through this, this email account, the one that you're setting up. And then we can also choose to archive incoming messages. It might be an email account where you'd want to do that, in which case it'll skip the inbox and put it right into this label. 
So I'm going to check that off and have it labeled. Um, in fact, I can add a new label. Let me just show you how that works, because this might be for bookkeepers, since it's a bookkeeper email. And then I can choose Add Account. Now then it asks you um, whether or not you want to be able to send mail through this account. So the answer is going to be yes, of course. Why would you not want to send mail through that account? I have some that I only use for receiving for sort of housekeeping purposes, like when I receive my electronic bills. So what's the name? You can put any name you want here. This is the name that's going to appear in the header when you send the email. So I can put bookkeeping nerd over here, next step. Now it asks if you want to send through Gmail, which is easier to set up, but the problem is in the headers it doesn't look as pretty. If you want it to look professional because you're sending it from your company, you want the headers to show, uh, you know, I, I only want the headers to show nerdenterprises.com. I don't want to show the Gmail information. So I want to send it through my own SMTP server. So now the SMTP server here, that's the outgoing mail server, which I've got right here. I'm just going to copy and paste it. This is why it's important to have both. Now the port number you should probably leave at the default of 587, which is Gmail just sets that up. If we go to test the send mail and it doesn't work, then we'll go back and choose one of these others. You definitely don't want to do port 25. That's like the spam port, so nobody uses that anymore. Now you have to put your password in. We entered it when we were setting up the incoming, now we have to enter it again to do the outgoing. Because every time you go to send mail, it's going to log in with your host, GoDaddy in my case, and then it's going to uh, send the password through to make sure. We're going to go with the recommended setting here, and we'll say add account. It's checking the credentials. And it may take a minute, but it will let me know once it's gone through. Okay, it says the email is provided, uh, responding too slowly. So let's try a different port. Let's try 465. I have a feeling that's what the problem is. The username is also remember the full email address. Now let's add the account. It's checking the credentials. Okay, now what it's going to do is it's going to ask you to enter a verification code. It's going to send you an email. So what I've done in this case is I've logged into my GoDaddy account to get it because I don't think you're going to, oh no, you will get it here because you are able to receive incoming. So we need that code from, from their email. This is actually just a welcome email. So we're going to look for another email from them in order to get that code so we can confirm that the email account is truly ours. I'm going to pause the recording, get that code, and then come back. Okay, so we've got the email from Google with the confirmation, and here's the confirmation code. So it's very simple. I'm just going to copy it, and we're going to come back over to this screen and enter in the code to verify it. I click verify, and I'm done. And now I can send email through my Gmail account. Now when I'm going to do that, I compose mail I have to choose from this drop down who I'm sending from. It's that simple. Now that it's set up, I can send email no problem. And that's how you do it. That's how you set up your email account for a POP3 email using Gmail. So if, as always, if you have any questions, email me, seth at nerdenterprises.com, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web. As always, if you want additional training on this or any other topic you see me cover, give us a call at 866-945-8070. Don't hesitate. Call us right now, and we'll get you scheduled for an online private one-on-one -on -one appointment or one-on-many if you have several people at your company who need to learn, and we'll get you going, learning what you need to learn how to do so you can run your business more efficiently and more effectively.